Good evening and welcome to this Joy Business Special interview. My name is Novan Akwahiford. And tonight we are looking at strengthening Namibia Ghana relationship on trade and economic development. Remember that the excellent bilateral relations between Namibia and Ghana have always been characterized by a common vision and a desire to strengthen their cooperation. Ghana and Namibia, I can say, continue to share a mutual vision and a purpose in the struggle towards the consolidation of peace, economic emancipation, and poverty eradication. And to take the cooperation between these two countries a notch higher, there is a delegation of government officials and businessmen from Namibia right here in this country. And they are looking at how they could harness the relationship between the two countries. And I have guests with me tonight to look at what this brings to us in this nation after this break. Welcome back to the special interview. Just as I said, my name is Novan Akwahefort, and tonight we are looking at strengthening Namibia Ghana relationship on trade and economic development. And joining me in the studio for this special interview is Mr. Velum Hoheyman. He is the permanent secretary of Ministry of Works and Transport uh, in Namibia, and also our own High Commissioner, I would say to Namibia, that is Her Excellency Salama to Fogo, uh, that's the Ghana's High Commissioner to Namibia. And also in the studio is the um, board, I uh, would we'll say CEO of the Tourism Authority in Namibia, and he's in the person of Digo uh, Nobeb. I help, I'm sure that I've gotten the name uh, right. Thank you very much, gentlemen and lady, for joining me in the studio. Now, let's begin with this um, reasons that led to Namibia I mean, after, I would say, you really opened your mission here in Ghana, and then also Air Namibia left and has come back, is flying the Ghana route. Um, what brought this over 30 men and women, both from government and private side, deciding that they would want to be in Ghana? Let me start with you, um, uh, Velem. I mean, what, what brought about this? Thank you, Nova, if I pronounced your name correctly. And uh, good evening to the viewers. Uh, before I come to the purpose of this visit, let me just generally say, and I think you have already articulated it, the Namibia-Ghana relations go back to the 60s, when uh, Ghana uh, gained its independence in 1957 and Namibia was still struggling. Our leaders uh, and etc. came to Ghana and then uh, we had our students that were also studying in Ghana. So. In uh, a word or two, let me just say, we, Ghana has played a very, very important role in this uh, uh, struggle for independence of Namibia. We thank uh, the people of Ghana and then, of course, the successive governments that have contributed to that effort in Africa and generally all over the world. Uh, we gained our independence in uh, uh, 1990, uh, 21st of March. And, uh, of course, uh, we, uh, Ghana had an embassy in Namibia. Uh, we subsequently, in the later years, opened the embassy in Ghana. And then uh, we have said that, uh, well, you know, uh, the political relations have always been good, but at the econ economic level, it has been very, very slow. So we said that uh, let's take a delegation and, uh, to uh, uh, Ghana so that we can enhance our relations at, you know, at a different level, at the economic level, trade relations, and then, uh, you know, in issues of uh, tourism and et cetera, and et cetera. Uh, this was actually spurred on by the fact, as you have correctly pointed out, and Namibia uh, just to fly from Vinduk uh, via Lagos uh, to Accra, and then it was stopped uh, sometime back, but we resurrected, so to say, uh, this, this route, uh, I think, in, in June. Yeah. And then initially we had agreed that uh, as part of the maiden flight, not just people to come, but let us also bring uh, government officials, uh, uh, you know, to kickstart uh, this relationship. Um, and then this is what we have been doing. Uh, we could not come at the 29th or at the end of June, 
but uh, we have arrived and then really we really want to hasten and then fasten that relationship that we have in the economic field. Just to go on to say is also that um, there's a lot of things that we can cooperate in and trade in. We are talking about Ghana has got a lot of rain, they are very good in agriculture, whereas Namibia is a dry climate, you know, we import about 90% of our foodstuffs. Uh, mostly from uh, South Africa, but we also want to diversify. Uh, and then we can also cooperate in the field of uh, tourism that we will talk about later. Um, there are other areas that uh, we can uh, uh, um, cooperate in is that Ghana has been independent for a long time, skills development and etc. But it should not be seen as a one-way thing from Namibia to Ghana, but it's also been seen from Ghana to Namibia and in the context of Africa. Uh, uh, we need to cooperate. There is a new um, 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 uh, CFT, C CFTA that has been signed uh, for all African countries to cooperate in to ease the restrictions uh, that, uh, uh, you know, that are um, impeding uh, this uh, free trade of goods and services. Uh, between the two countries. So, you know, for Ghana, it's a gateway for West Africa, but also for Namibia, it's a gateway that people can use for, you know, accessing uh, uh, Southern Africa. Because uh, Namibia is big, it's a big country. Uh, it's, it, Ghana can go into Namibia three times and then you'll be left with some remnants. Even with just a, po yes, a population uh, <laughs> of just 2.5. And, and, and a population, population of 25 million people. Exactly. Exactly. It is, it, is, it is because of those things that we can cooperate and, and uh, make sure that uh, we also do not just look at uh, Europe, you know, and uh, other continents. We, we, we can get the things that we need from Ghana and so can Ghana also get things from, from, from Namibia. You, you have a port uh, that is well developed. Uh, we also have the port of Wolfersby where things can directly be transported by ships from here and then vice versa. Okay, so let me come to your excellency. I mean, you, you've been to Namibia. You were sent on behalf of the people of Ghana mm -hmm. to be there. Uh, what are some of the opportunities that you think the people of Ghana can take advantage of? Because, I mean, just as I did indicate, a country with a land size three times of Ghana, but has only 2.5 million people in there, and we have 25 million. Uh, what sort of opportunities do you think that Ghanaians can also take advantage if they have to move into Namibia? Thank you. And hello to your cherished viewers. There are a lot of uh, opportunities. Even though Namibia is a small country in terms of population and size, they have achieved a lot. At times we forget that Africa can give to Africa and we try to look beyond Africa. Namibia is a very developed tourist country. Their G GDP, the tourism contributes, will, go to, will come to tourism, but the, let me mention it in person, contributes a lot in their GDP. Namibia has a well-structured tourism, as I say, we will go into. But for now, we can take advantage of selling some produce to Namibia. We have we get post harvest losses here, which we can take advantage, process and sell into Namibia. One of the reasons of the flights and this delegation is to showcase Ghana and Namibia. In the past, a lot wasn't said about Ghana and Namibia, the relationship between Ghana and Namibia. The awareness wasn't there, or even if it was there, it was difficult and a lot of measures have been put in place to let us penetrate into uh, Namibia. They have a lot of fish 
they have beef and their beef is one of the it has the highest quality one of the highest quality beef you can get from namibia we have food in abundance here because we have rains in the southern sector i was telling ps we get rains two times in a year they get just once and even the once is a problem he has come and he's admiring thick trees here we can cultivate and send we, we tell them give us fish and uh, meat then we will feed you we'll give you food so ghana can take advantage of it we used to have a meat factory the meat factory at palugu palugu yes. in the upper uh, east region it's nothing to write home about it's now. nothing to write home about i came when i took office i came went to palugu inspected i got some investors we went to Palugu. Investors from Namibia? From Namibia. Okay. They wanted to know the state of the facility. So I went around uh, Bukhari, Honorable Bukhari, now in the office of the president, was a minister. Regional we minister. Went, regional minister. Yeah. We went around, inspected the facility to see the state of it and to give them a feedback. So they are still working around to see how they can go and revamp the meat Factory. It's an assurance that very soon we might see the um, Pualugu factory, factory resurrected, is, is, yes. working again, I, I, this time I, I, from the I Namibian side, from the Namibian an, side. An, an African and kind of cooperation. Yes, because we can get the meat, they really have the meat, and you know we also are lovers of meat. Then trotters and what have you, we can also still import them from Nami uh, Namibia. So uh, Namibia has a lot to offer. We are not looking at its size. It's a give and take affair. We have this and they have that. So we give them food, they give us meat. Then it becomes a balanced meal. You're sure so that we can meet the standards that they will set? Because this is a country that imports 90% of, of their, their food from South Africa. We and I'm sure that the South Africans are giving them the kind of standards that they have set. One of the issues we have, saved, uh, we have faced uh, as a country over the years has to do with the ability to meet standards, standards as set when it comes to export. But we have also achieved, we have also import, uh, exported elsewhere with the same standards set. So if they give us standards, we are sure to meet the standards. Let me it's come an to assurance. you. It's, well, that's an assurance from Her Excellency uh, Salama Tufogo, who is Ghana's High Commissioner. Uh, to Namibia. Let me come to you, the man in charge of the tourism mm. board. Uh, even though we haven't gone to that area, what are the key things that you are looking out for in this visit? Mm. I mean, because I'm sure that your main aim is looking at how to increase the traffic from the Ghana side in terms of people who are interested in traveling for holidays and all that to your side. Yeah, basically from us as the National Tourist Board, which is mandated to do international marketing to draw tourists into our country is uh, very much important. Currently we've been operating in Europe and in Southern Africa, but of course uh, the visionary foresight of our president is for us to improve intra-Africa travel and definitely travel and air transportation facilitation yes. are closely matched. And what we are looking at currently is basically the, uh, the structure of the tourism industry in general, how it is set up and how can we work with them, including also the media industry, because these are the two key anchors that you have to work with in terms of trying to sensitize and create awareness to local people. And then the next one is to do, look at the profile of a Ghanaian traveler when he tra or she travels outbound what it is they need and what kind of people are those that are traveling so that you could package your messaging using the channels of communication, be it media or travel trade that we operate in the, in the space that we are operating. And that is basically what we are looking as a fact-finding mission that we are on now currently with. And so who, who are the key stakeholders you are looking to work with? Because you are looking at driving traffic to your side, but I'll mm. ask you, what are you also doing to mm. drive traffic from your end to our side as well, because you don't want to only receive people from Ghana, but we also want to see Namibians coming into Ghana to see what we also have. 
Yeah, basically for that part it is that we need to work very collaboratively with the Ghanaian Tourism Authority because it takes both ways because they are having a responsibility of a destination marketing as well so that we go so how can we jointly then work together to ensure that we reciprocate us marketing to Ghanaian people to travel into Namibia and Ghana marketing to Namibians to travel to to to, to um, Ghana because we could see they are quite of uh, unique differences because the offerings are different because in Ghana it's more about heritage and that that is that, that is the focus of it for from the few days that I've stayed in Ghana whereas for us it's more nature wildlife that we could offer which Ghana doesn't offer so if there is a process there is a area of reciprocity that we can work on with Okay, now let me come back to you, uh, Willem. Um, what are some of the other areas that haven't come into this country? You're looking at, um, you know, ensuring that you can have this uh, economic cooperation and see what businesses can be set up in our side of the country that will help your side. Okay. No, thank you, no. Uh Yes, we, <laughs> it's, it's a lot. We, we, we are exploring areas, but uh, what I can mention, is that, um, um, uh, for example, you take the issue of Air Namibia. I've said that we have resurrected the flights. We do not only want to uh, uh, stop uh, uh, in Ghana, but we also want to proceed, you know, from Ghana, I mean, from Accra to London, for example. Um, we had had discussions with uh, the Minister of Aviation and his staff. We have not agreed on anything. This was just exploratory talks in general, and then we are just going to follow up when we get back. With respect to um, um, our investment uh, promotion agencies, for example, we have agreed that there is going to be um, a memorandum of understanding. I understand two or three years ago it was already mooted, it was drafted, and then somehow in the process, uh, um, uh, it was displaced or something like that. We are going to resurrect that as well to make sure that uh, we consult uh, both uh, uh, here in uh, Accra and then of course in Namibia and then through our two uh, diplomatic missions uh, and then uh, 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 that cooperation will also come to the fore. The other areas that as he has mentioned is tourism um, but you know I was I was I was very um, uh, when, when we met the various, you know, ministries and uh, I was very, uh, the same theme is coming through to say that why should we only, you know, we, we, we are very Eurocentric, we, it's not only Ghana, Ghana always looks forward to Europe, for example, the UK, America, it's the same thing for Namibia, we look forward to South Africa, Europe and etc. And et At least South Africa is still you part know. of Africa. South Africa is still part of Africa, but we want to diversify, we, we really do not want just to rely on one partner, but in the spirit of uh, regional uh, integration at the level of the regional econ economic communities, and the wider Africa for that matter. I think some of the things we really do not have to get only from one source, you know. And then, uh, it's, of course, we import a lot of food from South Africa, but we also export a lot to Europe, you know. No way our beef, uh, we have a beef code of about 1,800. Um, with the EU, headed, we have 10,000, you know, uh, uh, the code that we have of EU. EU. Um, and then, of course, a lot of our other things, diamonds, you know, and etc. We can cooperate in the field of, uh, we don't have oil. I hope uh, Ghana will push, you know, some of the oil to our side so that we can also discover. <laughs> 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 we, we have been carrying out tests and, and really, but we have discovered uh, uh, natural gas, for example. But it's uh, around 200 kilometers off the coast, very deep, very expensive to extract. I know Ghana has also discovered natural gas, and then uh, currently we have decided that maybe in terms of uh, bringing in uh, um, or developing our kudu gas field, let's bring in gas imported from somewhere, and then to have gas to power, you know, uh, uh, or gas to electricity, uh, so that we can also, because 40% of our electricity is produced in Namibia, but we import about 61%, or 60 to 61%. These are long-term things, uh, as I said, we have been exploring and then we have had very, very interesting discussions 
with the Ministry of Tourism, Ministry of uh, Aviation, Trade and Industry, uh, the Ministry of Petroleum, uh, the Planning Commission, Ghana Chamber of Commerce. You know, we want to bring also the private sectors to talk to each other. And then, of course, we have a courtesy call on the Vice President. Uh, and then tomorrow we are going to see the Ministry of Environment. Uh, we can learn a lot from, you know, uh, how Ghana has uh, dealt with the issue of environment. And then, of course, transport cooperation between two of our ports. I understand that there is also going to be some cooperation between the two uh, in the form of an MOU. It has not been finalized yet. And then we also, of course, we want to see other spots uh, uh, in, in, in Ghana. You know, we visited, obviously, the Mama Guruma Museum, and then uh, Saturday morning, I think we are traveling to uh, the coast. To, uh, uh, the yes, uh, yes, okay. yes. You're yes, going yes. to Amina, my hometown. Yes, yes, we yeah. are going to your hometown. Yes. You know, we want to see everything so that we, when, when we uh, go back, we can also tell our people about this uh, and etc. But it, is, it has been very exciting. We have learned a lot of things. We can talk the whole day if you want me to. Uh, and uh, this is just the beginning. And then while we were having these formal meetings, um, people from our delegation have also been having uh, you know, bilaterals of their counterparts. Uh, you know. uh, and uh, there's still a lot of meetings that will be ongoing. And then hopefully through our embassies, when we return to our respective duties, you know, we'll be trying to follow up and then try to implement this. Obviously, yeah. they would try and implement these kind of corporations or the uh, relationship between Ghana and Namibia will become stronger, which probably could lead to creating the necessary jobs that you may be looking out for. When we come back, we would go back into, you know, what this means and how it can engineer job creation um, for all of us in this country because a partnership can be a two-edged sword. Sometimes it could be one plus one that can be equal to two, three. You never know. That is what can happen because employment is also one of the issues that on the continent, in Africa, most governments are dealing with. Stay with us. After this break, we'll go into that. Welcome back. My name is Novan Akwahifo. This is the Joy Business Special interview that we're bringing you tonight. We are actually looking at the strengthening of Namibia-Ghana relationship on trade and economic development and also discussing issues uh, that bother on the African continent. How do we ensure free trade? How do we ensure that we overcome the language barrier? How do we ensure that the various governments and their policies that they have, apart from the government themselves, you have various regional blocks and they have their interest to look at. And in view of that, that is the reason why trade among African countries has become very difficult to deal with. And um, with me in the studio uh, today, just to remind you, is Her Excellency Ghana's ambassador to Namibia. That is Her Excellency Salama to Fogo. And also I have with me Willem uh, Hoyman. He's the permanent secretary of Ministry of Works and Transport. And then also the boss as far as when it comes to tourism uh, or the tourism board in Namibia. That is my own good friend, Digo uh, Nobeb. Um, he's also with us in the studio. And just before we went on the break, I wanted to come to Your Excellency. I mean, I know that one of the challenges that we have on this continent has been our ability to trade among ourselves. Right. And just Velimo was talking about that we need to trade among ourselves. But there's a challenge which we all must admit that has to do with various government policies, that is, uh, single governments among themselves. How do we overcome this to ensure that we can promote and just at a point where we are supposed to all be signing to the free trade, free movement agreement by the AU? Thank you. The, uh, movement is when we're coming from Namibia to Ghana, getting they needed to take visas. That's number one, a challenge. Why must we take visas to travel to Africa? 
At times, we, we overlook certain petty, petty hindrances that will block certain opportunities for countries. We don't need, we have to make certain rules flexible. G government to government must see to it that certain, uh, what do you call it? Legislation. Legislation is made relaxed for us to move our countries forward. And, and would you um, recommend to the two governments, that is like Namibia and Ghana, to mm -hmm. take a second look at ensuring that between these two countries, you know, we have, you don't have to take visas. Either you get visa on arrival, yeah, Ga or it becomes Ghana, a visa-free, because you are there. Ghana, Ghana is already doing it. Ghana, you don't need, from Ghana, from Namibia, you don't need you, a, a visa to come to Ghana. When we got to the airport, they saw it. So when we go, there are some of the things that we have to look at. One of the things that made Air Namibia to stop its operations was as a result of these things. Namibia, Namibia didn't have an embassy here. So getting a visa to go to Namibia was a problem. You needed to go to Lagos before you could take a visa. Then if you, you want to travel, you want to go and give money to a country, say you are going for a holiday, you are going for tourism uh, relaxation, you are going for a rest, then you have to spend money because of a visa. You spend money to Lagos, come back and go to uh, Namibia. It will demoralize you from going. And tourism, as we know, will come to it, create jobs the people that we have employed there, by your going, will pay them. Okay, so let me come to you, uh, Digo. I mean, from where you sit, mm -hmm. how do we deal with this challenge on the continent? Yeah, basically, I think as national tourist boards who are mandated for us to market a destination and to draw tourists to your own country has been a stumbling block because of the visa. So basically what we've been advocating and lobbying for is a visa facilitation for travelers. One way to deal with this is a visa on arrival as you have clearly stated. You could apply online and you could be vetted if it vetting is the need. We understand certainly the need of security and safety by a given country because of its sovereignty, but there could be a more better tools that could be used given the technology that we have nowadays. And then on arrival, you can then go and get your visa and then you can uh, enter the country. That's the other one. Or the other option could be apply online and you submit it and then you get approved and you uh, emailed your visa, which you could print and carry with you. And that way you make it much more easier because uh, rather than to require a person that you must now appear in person for biometrics testing for your finger thumbs and all this type of thing, fingerprints and all that, and in person, that is actually very costly and not only in terms of monetary terms, but time that you have to spend to go into an embassy, queue up and get that. So that becomes a stumbling block, which is a hindrance probably for intra-Africa traveling. If we are to advocate as a continent for intra-travel, um, Africa intra-travel, then that are issues that we need to seriously consider and address. Because, I mean, as an African country, you allow a European uh, for free to travel into your own country. But for your own neighbor, you have an issue of requiring from him or her to have a visa to enter your own country. Okay, Valen, I was going to ask that in, 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 in a period where there are a lot of terrorism acts going on and Africa cannot isolate itself, next door neighbor, Nigeria, Boko Haram, just right there. And you never can tell who is coming into your country. If you cannot have a physical contact with the person and take all the necessary information that you have, it's not just right that these countries would subject you to these kind of tests before they allow you in. Yeah. No, but uh, let, let me just take your feedback. You know, in, in the past, it was difficult 
you go back to the 60s and things like that. Apart from using uh, the common law provisions, you know, it was really, really very difficult uh, for somebody to travel from one country to the other country. But now, you know, uh, we have established what we call the regional economic communities. For West Africa is the cause. Yes. For Southern Africa is Sadek. Sadek. They yeah. really have tried their best, but at also at the continental level. You know, we have Agenda 2063, and then in that agenda, it calls for visa-free travel within Africa by 2018, 2020. In response to this, Namibia has actually abolished, uh, or you don't require a visa when you have diplomatic passports and official passports from all African countries. And to go back also right after independence, we actually abolished visa requirements for Southern Africa, uh, for those countries that are members of, of, of SADC. SADC. So it starts slowly and then eventually we will get there. I'm sure, you know, uh, Ghana also in the context of West Africa, there has always been free movement of people. Uh, within the region, you uh, go to Nigeria, region. you don't need exactly. Vista to go to Nigeria, yeah, exactly. Cote exactly. d'Ivoire, exactly. Burkina Faso. So exactly in terms of these regional economic communities, you know, we, we, we will work out something. Of course you mentioned the issue about terrorism, but uh, those issues will be resolved. And then uh, 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 Europe is, you know, facing the same problem in terms of the EU. You, they also have uh, visa fee travel and etc. And later on, you know, as time goes on. Um, um, business delegations that are visiting through, you know, uh, the two embassies respectively. I think we can look at some of these things to make it easier for them to enter our respective countries. And then you can extend that to school children that are visiting both sides, you know, to Namibia and then here, uh, health workers and etc. And ex eventually people that are uh, um, um, going for tourist attractions to both countries. You know, I used to work for the SADC Secretariat, and then we did, even at one stage, discuss the issue of, uh, you know, Juni, Juni visa for tourists. You know, tourists, uh, if they come to any one of those countries, you know, they should be able to go to the other countries without necessarily going to queue up. If they come to South Africa, they want to Botswana, they have to again look for where the Botswana embassy is in South Africa, queue up and things like that. And then these are some of the things that uh, that, uh, that eventually will be a fruit. And uh, through practice, you know, uh, things will improve. You know, governments will talk, make it easier for the two nations, and then we can take it from there. Uh, before I come to your Excellency, Dickie, do you think that our colonial um, masters, that, you know, those that captured, you know, various countries on the continent, is also an issue, especially when you look at the Anglophone, Francophone thin? which some have said is one of the reasons why we've not been able to come together as a continent and open up our various borders to allow for the free trade and free movement of people. Yeah, certainly because uh, Africa is endowed with natural resources, whereas obviously where our colonial masters have been coming from, they don't have natural resources, so they would rather want to pigeonhole those countries to which they are dependent in terms of natural resources that they need to export in raw form and convert and create jobs offshore. So definitely they would have at arm's length some kind of an influence on a political regime of the day to try and really not allow them to fully integrate in an African environment. And I guess it is a mental shift that we need as an Africans to develop so that we can then work and towards integrated goal rather than to move away of so-called uh, man-made dependency syndrome whereas you do have resources and you could call the shots uh, other rather currently it's the other way around and i guess that in a way is also a limitation in terms of fully integrating Africa as a continent and us to work together and allow this free trade amongst ourselves rather we would want to export it to a European country that you have a good relationship from the past. Your Excellency, um, just before we go for our next break, for you, how do we ensure that this or this partnership can engineer job creation for especially the female youth in Ghana who do not or who probably are unemployed? Let me put it that way. 
Yes. Yes. I mean, uh, what do you think of that? Yes. How do we ensure that you know this partnership, you know, can engineer, you know, that kind of job creation that or the jobs that peop uh, the youth are looking for? This partnership, if we start to do trade between us and Namibia, like I rightly talked about the Kwalugu uh, meat processing factory in Palugu. If we are able to collaborate with the, uh, Namibia to take up the meat processing factory, the people around Palugu will be employed. One district, one factory would have had a share of employing the people around uh, the Upper East. And so with other areas of our dealings with them, they also can take some of our, they also can take some tra trade from here to, to, Namib to Namibia, to Namibia. Yeah. because we, we, a country cannot have all. You have this, they like it. They, we have this, they don't have. They have, we don't have. So we give them and they take. So we are creating jobs for them, they are creating jobs for us. So it's a give and take affair. It's not going to be, it's two sides of the same coin. So that is why this collaboration is very necessary for us. And that is why we see this delegation as a very Key, uh, key, they, they, they key an important mission for our uh, this particular visit. visit okay. So since their arrival, they haven't relaxed because they know what the uh, visit has in store for both countries. Yes. They have collaborated with their counterparts in the other the, the, the same sectors. They are colleagues in the, uh, the same sectors. Then they are deliberating where there's the need to benchmark, they are, will benchmark, and where there's the need to just move straight away, we will, we will do that. And if that is put in perspective, I think it will go a long way to alleviate some of this agitating problem. They are few, but they also have unemployment problems. For instance, the way we deal with our open market system they don't have okay there are things they can take back to namibia to give to their people to empower them economically they'll give them jobs and we, we i was telling uh, peers this afternoon that you don't need big capital in ghana to start a business. a business yes you yeah. get up with small you do it small small those people you see on the streets you think they are not making it small small they make it you find somebody selling some things you think, quote unquote, they are useless. In the next minute, you find him in a big shop, and it's as a result of that edition. Uh, you have to start small before they, they, they okay. go there. Thank you very much, Your mm. Excellency. Um, you're still watching the special interview with us here on Joy News Channel. My name is Norman Akwa-Hayford, and this is on strengthening Namibia-Ghana relationship on trade and economic development. But one area which is also important and as one which can be seen as one of the world's largest economic sectors is travel and tourism. It creates jobs, drives exports, and generates prosperity across the world. When we come back, we go into travel and tourism exchange between the two countries. Please stay with us. <music> Namibia Wildlife Resorts has the sole mandate to operate resorts within Namibia's national parks. It is extraordinary in its approach to offer a great tourism product in the form of various tourist facilities scattered throughout the country in Namibia's major national parks. The Itosha National Park is the country's flagship conservation area, renowned for its spectacular wildlife viewings. 
The park is home to different lodging experiences, namely Okakweyo, Halali, Namutoni, Ongoshi, Dolomite, and Olifatras. Okakweyo, the first tourist resort to have opened in Itosha, is most famous for its flood-lit water hole, where the spectacle of wildlife congregating and interacting can be observed at close quarters. Accommodation ranges from double-story waterhole chalets to chalets of various sizes and configurations. Bush chalets are equipped with dry areas as well. Halali is surrounded by some of the most popular water holes in the park. A floodlit water hole, which is viewed from an elevated vantage point from within the camp, provides exceptional wildlife viewing throughout the day and well into the night. Accommodation is provided in either family chalets, bush chalets, or double rooms, all with braai facilities. Okay, so welcome back. I'm sure that you were watching uh, that uh, video, and that is some scenes from Namibia. What an interesting uh, place to go. I'm sure that you are now telling yourself that instead of flying outside Africa, there are more sites you can see. When you talk of desert, you don't have to go to Dubai. You can find that right here on this continent. And Namibia is one of the places that you can find that. And for those of you also watching us in Namibia, if you're looking for um, a place where you can see more trees and you can enjoy uh, the sun, why not? It is Ghana that you have to come to. <laughs> so it's just um, uh, a two-way thing. You cannot just have it. But joint businesses analysis of the global economic impact of travel and tourism, um, what we find out, it showed us that the impact of the sector, uh, or the sector accounts for some 10%, 10.4% of global GDP. So you're talking of 313 million jobs, or 99% of total employment, only in 2017. And this is the tourism sector that we need to take charge and ensure that we can use it to create jobs. So in Ghana, you can talk of, if cocoa is giving you a lot of exchange, then tourism is another area that we should look at. And a lot uh, we can generate there. You can generate jobs and we can get all the uh, you know, revenues that we are looking to help the nation. And with me in the studio, again, we're still on the Ghana-Namibia um, relationship on trade and economic development. Uh, we, I want to come back to you, uh, uh, Valina. I want to just find out from you. Uh, why is tourism, or why should tourism, be very important and why should we think of just going through Africa instead of going outside the continent? No, thank you. Um, uh, no, no one. Uh, tourism is is, 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 is is a critical factor. You know, in the, in the past, uh, most of our tourists that we get, and Namibia is not an exception, and I'm sure Ghana is not an exception. It's people that come from outside. Yeah. Uh, you have tourists uh, uh, that come, from, in our case, from Germany, uh, uh, and then from Europe, and then from America, but mostly from Europe. We do not even have domestic tourism, you know, and then I understand that uh, from the Ghana perspective, you know, we, this is what we can learn, because in Ghana at least people go from, you know, uh, uh, you don't only have tourists from outside, but you also have made some progress with respect to domestic yeah, tourism. Yeah, domestic tourism, yeah. yeah. But for us, it's, it's, it's basically non-existing. You know, everybody travels outside everybody travels the travels country. Outside or everybody comes from outside, you know, you could see from the videos, I don't have to tell you that. So we need to encourage our own people, you know, give them incentives, yes. okay. this thing takes time, um, and etc. Uh, but start with government entities, you know, when we're talking to the Minister of uh, um, uh, Tourism... Yeah, Tourism, yeah. 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 She was, yes, yes. Uh, I think she was telling us that uh, they are taking, you know, 
government people first and foremost to some tourist destinations in in uh, in, 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 in Ghana, in various parts of Ghana. But in our case, you know, we hardly do these things, do this. you know. Uh, so it's critical in that sense. And it's not, you know, if the whole of Africa can have also that domestic and then, in, uh, you know, as you were saying, you know, job creation uh, and etc. it's very, very important. But I just wanted to come back quickly to the issue of job creation. Um, uh, yesterday, uh, I think uh, Joe head of yeah, state. Yeah, we, 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 I mean, 100,000 people graduated <laughs> it, and then they are supposed to have it, jobs. Yeah. It, it really impressed us and then we are looking at that. It's going back that and then doing when the we same go back, we'll do, you know, we'll try to do the same thing. It's not easy, but it's something that we can be proud of. And then this is, it's these small things, you know. From the Ghana perspective, so, so that small would, would help. Let, let, let me yeah. just go to um, uh, yeah. the man from the uh, tourist board himself. Yeah. I'm sure he's the best person to sell <laughs> your country. Uh, yeah. let, just very finally from you, uh, 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 Digo, uh, why should people visit your country yeah. from Ghana? Basically, uh, as I said, conservation is enshrined in our constitution, and that is what we thrive in terms of and use the tourism as the vehicle for allowing the local people to look after wildlife and through looking after wildlife of course uh, we then attract tourists to come view the animals or any other scenery that we have as a benefit that they would directly derive through job creation or through levies or whatever contribution that the tourism industry would be making but in a nutshell what we are selling in Namibia is an experience because we do have all the required attractions but basically in a nutshell what you take away when you visited Namibia is either soulfulness and solitude that you would get in you because given the land mass and a few people unlike here in Ghana you would be then really be your own person that would be in that space at that given moment and I think that is for you to go and really rediscover yourself and relax. All right, so you heard it from the man who is in charge. Thank you very much. Uh, that has been uh, the CEO of Namibian Tourism Board, that is Digo uh, Nabab. And then also with me in the studio was the um, Ghana's High Commissioner to Namibia, Her Excellency Salamatu Fogo, and then also Permanent Secretary of Ministry of Works, and transport, that is Velem Ohayaman. And my name is Novan Akwaheford. It's been the special Joy Business interview on Joy News. Good night. See you again. Another.